We are grateful, O oh Lord, for tonight. We have gathered in your name, Abba, our King. Lord Jesus, we ask that you have your way. And let the name of the Lord be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen.
is a song I wrote from the Lord. It's an original composition.
It is always a privilege, O oh Lord, to lift up a song unto you. Oh, blessed are those who know the joyful sound. They shall forever be praised in your name. Those who look to you are radiant. Their faces are not ashamed. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord Jesus, thanks for your love and your care. You are always there. You never leave. You never forsake. You stick closer. Oh, Lord, we are grateful. Tonight we have come again. Those who have the ears to hear, let them hear. Those who have the heart to receive, let them receive. Those whose heart is searching for reality, those whose, whose heart is searching for God, may tonight be that night, O oh God, that they will connect with you. Even through this broadcast, something will be said, something will be done. Holy Spirit, we trust you. We trust you that you know how to reach your people. You know how to reach deep down in the heart of your people. Oh, to bring salvation. To take away stony hearts. To take away thorny hearts. To take away, oh God, sin and to install righteousness, to install eternal life. Oh, you open the blind eyes. You cause the deaf ear to open. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for tonight also they will hear your word. They will hear from you, oh God. I am excited because I also will hear from you tonight. And everyone else, oh God, all across this world, we will hear from you. We are excited because the entrance of your word brings light and it brings illumination. Thank you in advance for illumination. Thank you, oh God, that darkness is pushed away and the true light shines ever brighter. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your holy name in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much. Thank you for joining. My name is Kofi Thompson. Those of you that have met me before. If you have not met me before, um, <laughs> I thank God tonight that we get to meet. Amen. God is amazing, I tell you. Thank you, Lord. Let me get my chair straighten out bring my microphone down thank you lord oh i hear this song i don't know if you have heard it before oh blessed be your name Hey. 
steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Your mercy never come to an end. They are new every morning. Thank you, Jesus. New every morning. Great is your faith. Another day has come Do something new In our lives Yesterday is gone Another day has come Do something new In our lives It's our cry tonight Yesterday is gone Another day has come Do something new In our life Yesterday is gone Another day has come Do something new In our life Something new in our lives. Oh Lord, do something new in our lives. Something new in our lives. Something new in our lives. Oh Lord, yesterday. Another day has come Do something new In our lives Yesterday is gone Another day has come Do something new Oh, I will yet do Something new, the Lord says We receive Lord Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. To you we come again and again. We bow in worship. We bow in worship. There is no higher calling. No greater honor than to bow and kneel before your throne. I am amazed at your glory, embraced by your mercy, O oh Lord. I live to worship you. There is no higher calling, no greater honor than to bow and kneel before your throne. I am amazed at your glory, embraced 
By your mercy, O Lord, I live to worship you. Oh, blessed be Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I hope you brought your Bibles with you today. We're going to consider John chapter number 14. John chapter number 14. John 14. John chapter number 14. Oh, praise be God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John 14, if you are there, say amen. From verse 1, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and receive you to myself, Jesus said, that where I am, there you may be also. Oh, blessed be God. Blessed be the word of God. I go to prepare a place for you, Jesus said. And when I finish preparing that place, he says, I will come back and take you to myself. That where I am, you may be also. Isn't that incredible? To me it is, and I know it is to you as well. Jesus said, where he is, we also are. Where he is, we also are. Those of us who believe in him. You remember, last week I was sharing about John chapter one and i was sharing that we are told that he came to his own and his own received him not but to as many as received him he gave them the right to become children of god even to those who believe and still believe in his name. So he's saying here in John chapter 14, those that have believed in him, he says, where he is right now, we also are. He has received us to himself. So you ask me, where is he? Or where are we? <laughs> oh, Adam, where are thou? Bless the name of the Lord. Let's look at that answer over here. I've said, if Bible sense makes common sense, seek no other sense. 
Oh, praise be the name of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 2. Okay, go with me to Ephesians chapter 2. We are answering that question. Remember, today is Bible studies, all right? We are answering that question. Jesus said in John chapter 14, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. And when I finish preparing that place, I will come and receive you to myself so that where I am, you may be there also. Remember from, from, from verse 1 of John chapter 14, he began to talk about where he's going. He said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. So I go to prepare a place for you. It means he's going to his father and to prepare that place for us. And that place is a place where his father is. Okay, so we are going to answer that in Ephesians chapter 2. Look at from verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Verse 6, And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So, Jesus said, where I am, there you may be also. And we know that Christ Jesus is seated at the right hand of God. And we read in Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 4. It tells us that God is rich. He's rich in mercy to the point that even when we were sinners, even when we were alienated from God, even when we were we were wallowing in our sin, when we were decked up in trespasses, God chose to die for us and to bring us back to himself. That's why the writer of Ephesians tells us it is by grace that you have been saved. So stop bragging those of you that are already saved. But those of you that are not saved, you will be saved by grace, by the, the, the richness of his mercy. He extends to you. He extends a hand of fellowship. He extends a hand of reunion. He extends his hand of love. 
He opens his heart to you. You might be the worst person in this world according to how society has graded humans. You might be a murderer. You might be an arm robber. You might be a Ponzi, pon, uh, how do you call it? Ponzi schemer. No matter how deep you are in sin, the blood of Jesus is powerful to wash you clean. No other detergent can. Only the blood of Jesus. There is no other fountain that we know of that can wash you clean except the blood of Jesus. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. That is the reality. So you can give your life to God now. Some of you are watching now. You have come to the end. You have hit a brick wall. Some of you are deep in addiction. You are saying to yourself, I cannot live another minute. I came to call the devil a liar. You can live an eternal life. If you give your life to Jesus, he will change your life. He will forgive you of your sin. Yes, he will forgive you of your sin. His blood will wash you clean. You are going to be a brand new man. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old is gone, the new has come. When you come to Christ, he regenerates your soul. Your soul is renewed. You are born again. You are born with an incorruptible seed. Are you listening to me? When your mom gives birth to you, you were in the womb for nine months that you come out when you are out it is only a matter of time you're gonna die whether you live 200 years 200 years you're still gonna die but when it comes to jesus when we are born again in jesus and through jesus it is an instant and when you are born again you never die you are given eternal life. You are given everlasting life. So even though your body may die here on earth, but the real you shall continue with Jesus and with all the saints that have gone ahead of us. That is why in Hebrews chapter 12, we are reminded that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. I am a witness. The book I just read, the book of Ephesians, was written by a guy called Saul of Tarsus, a notorious wicked man, religious zealot, who wanted to destroy the work that Christ came to establish here on earth. He was determined to bring shame 
to Christ. But in the process of his rage and anger on his crusade to bring Christianity to its knees, in that crusade, guess who met him? Hello! <laughs> guess who met him? Jesus Christ met him. When he saw Christ, the warmth of the love that Christ showed to him. Saul of Tarsus said he would never, ever turn his back on Christ. He found the one thing that his heart has been searching for, a home, a place of rest. God said, those who enter into my rest, they cease from their labor. Life is a hustle, man. <laughs> it's a hustle. When you find God through Jesus Christ, your heart will find rest. Your heart will find its resting place. Your heart will find a home. Rivers of living water will continually flow through your soul. Your soul shall be refreshed every moment, every minute. So Saul of Tarsus, he found Christ. He gave his life to Jesus Christ. And he became a champion for Christ. His name was changed to Paul. So the book of Ephesians was written by this guy. His name was Paul. Don't tell me that you are such a bad guy that Christ cannot save you. Don't tell me that you are such, a, such an evil lady that Christ cannot save you. No, there is a place for you. Didn't we read in John 14? Did you? Maybe you forgot what I just read. Let me read it to you again. All right? <laughs> John chapter 14. Gospel of John. Jesus said here, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in in God, believe also in me. He said in verse 2, In my Father's house are many mansions, and I go to prepare a place for you. And when that place is ready, I'll come and receive you to myself. Other translations will say, In my Father's house are many rooms. There is a room for you. There is a place for you. In the kingdom of heaven, there is a place for you. In the kingdom of God, there is a place for you. You are not far gone. You are not too far gone. Come home. Come to Jesus today. Yes. I said yesterday, I'm saying it today. You cannot live a hopeless life in this world. There is hope in God. Christ in us is that hope. You understand? Don't live one more day. Don't live one more day in hopelessness. Look unto him and be radiant. Look unto him and be radiant so that you can also say, taste and see that the Lord is good. If 
you did it for Saul, who became Paul, he will do it for you too. He's calling you today. So somebody is asking me, how do I do this? It's very simple. If you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved. You don't, you don't say it just as a recital or, or because somebody is forcing you to say it. You must mean it. You must desire to change your life. You must desire to, to want to come back home to your father. You have been gone for too long. God is calling you today. Come back home. Come back home. So let me lead you into that prayer. Especially there's one woman watching me from Chad. Chad in Africa. Not only her, to everybody else. You are tired of life. You are lost. You are involved in so much darkness. You can't save yourself. Christ is here. He will save you. Say, Lord Jesus. I come to you today. I make you my Lord and personal Savior. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me with your blood from any unrighteousness. Make me yours. I receive you into my heart. Be my Lord and personal Savior. In Jesus' name, Amen. I believe you meant it when you prayed this prayer. Because God takes this commitment seriously. Let me tell you about me. How I came to be a servant of God. In Ghana, um, between 1999 and the year 2000, life was tough, difficult. So as a young musician, I've, I've had some breakthroughs and I've traveled abroad, you know, done some concerts and stuff like that. I remember I came to America I went to Europe, some some countries in Europe. When I went back home, I really didn't want to stay in Ghana anymore. I wanted to come and settle here in America. Even though my Christianity was not that solid, but I remember praying making a promise to God, making a promise to Jesus. I said, if you will take me to America, I will do your work. That is what I said. And before I knew it, I had a visa and I had a plane ticket off I went and I came to America and ever since I came to America I have been doing his work I'm saying to you that he takes our confessions seriously 
He takes our commitment seriously. He takes our covenant seriously. When we make promises to him, he takes it seriously. So when you make that confession, the sinner's confession, and say, I make you, Lord Jesus, my Lord and personal Savior, you must mean it in your heart because you are transitioning into another world. You are transitioning into another kingdom. It is Christ who takes us from sin and convey us. He takes us away from darkness and takes us into the kingdom of God. He takes us there. So there is room for you. And if you prayed that prayer, I am glad. Good for you. Good for you. I'm glad because you got connected to God. You got connected to God. The bridge has been fixed. The bridge has been repaired. Now you have free access to heaven, free access to God, to the throne room of God. So, Jesus said, in my, in my Father's house are many mansions, and I go to prepare a place for you when I am done, I will come and take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may also be. So, we read also in Ephesians chapter 2, that indeed where he is, we are also there in him. We are also there in him. Let's go back to Ephesians again. I want you to see something. I want you to see this. Oh, Lord God, thank you. Where is Ephesians? There you are. There you are. Look at Ephesians chapter 1. From verse 15, Ephesians chapter 1, from verse 15. Therefore I also, after I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the work according to the working of his mighty power verse 20 which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places excuse me remember where where Christ is seated okay and where he is seated we are seated in him Okay, so here he says he's seated in the right hand 
of God in the heavenly places. Look at verse 21. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. What I wanted to bring to you from what I just read is that Christ is seated far above principalities and powers and all the spiritual hosts of wickedness. Whatever spirit, evil spirit, tormented you and used you to commit all of these heinous uh, 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 sins, Christ, now that you have come into Christ, all of these, they are now under your feet. Because that is what the Bible says. I believe the Bible. It is the very word of God. God's word is light. The words of Christ is life. He said in John chapter 6, verse 61, he says, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Okay? So, so he said in John 14, where I am, Jesus said, where I am, there you also may be. There has been a lot of confusion. People saying all kinds of things against Jesus. But you see, I have found out that only those who, who open their heart, he will come in. And he will make himself real to you. With Jesus, it is personal. You may know about him. You may have heard about him. But do you know him? Because when it comes to him, it is personal. Only when you open your heart and invite him in, that he will become real to you. So that when others are saying all kinds of things, you can boldly say, I know him. Because those who know their God, they are bold, they are strong, they are immovable. He's real to me. When you give him the chance, he will be real to you. So that you can also say, I know his mind. He is a friend. In time of trouble, in time of sorrow and pain, he pulled me out of the rubble and told me I am his own. That is my song, by the way. If you go to YouTube, go and type it, Jesus is Mine by Kofi Thompson. It's a wonderful song. And enjoy that song. Okay. He is my way out of no way, my shelter in time of storm, the lifter of my head, nobody like him. Jesus, Jesus is mine, and I belong to him. Jehovah, Jireh is mine, and I belong to him. You can also say that. 
And you can't say this if you only heard me say it. Or you heard somebody say it. You have to open your heart to receive him. So that you can also make your own song. You make your joy complete. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, in John chapter 1, I'm going to finish over there. John chapter 1. Oh, blessed be God. John chapter 1. Remember, I was talking about John chapter 1 the other day. Look at from verse 11. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believed in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of a flesh, nor of the will of a man, but of God. Remember, your mom gives birth, you are conceived nine months and you come out. But when God gives birth to you, it is instant. That's what verse 13 is saying we have become children of God not by the will of man or a woman but by God and then when we become that he says in verse 14 and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth That is what I was saying, that um, he has to be real to you. It is personal. When you become child of God, when you believe in him, you, you welcome him into your heart, and you become his. The next thing, according to verse 14 of John chapter 1, the word remember in John chapter 1 verse 1 refers to Jesus as the word right now I am speaking the word to you when you receive the word John chapter 1 when we get to verse 14 that word will become flesh that word will become a person that is what it means that word becomes real and John is saying that he became real to us and we saw his glory. You see what I'm trying to say? Once he comes into your life, the word becomes flesh. He becomes, a, he becomes, he becomes real. You will begin to know Jesus personally. If your home is always full of chaos, always arguments, brother against brother, sister against sister, there's no love, there's no unity, invite Jesus into that home. And you are the one who is going to take him there. When you bring him into your heart, you take him to your home. Because he is going to teach you love. He's going to show you love. And it's only a matter of time. You will become love too. And when you become love, you will, you will now begin to permeate like, like, like um, a little yeast that you put in a flour dough. See, my mom was a baker. So I know about bakery. Okay? 
and you put yeast in that dough and you mix it together it's only a matter of time the yeast will go everywhere in the dough true love is infectious when you allow Christ to love you it's only a matter of time you will become love and your home that was full of confusion and antagonism and hatred you will become love you will become light in a place of darkness and it's only a matter of time that love will spread to every single person in that home Jesus does that Woo! he does that are you listening to me he does that yeah he does that he, he did it for me. He will do it for you. Give him a chance. Praise God. So you can receive him today. Alright. And like I said before. Somebody will ask me. So how do I do this? The answer is this. If you believe with your heart. You confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. You shall be saved. This is how to do it. Just repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, today I welcome you into my life to be my Lord and personal Savior. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me with your blood. And reconcile me to God. I thank you. And I welcome you. In Jesus name. Amen. If you did it. You have. Welcome him in. Open your heart fully. And allow him. Allow his light. To shine in you. And your life will never be the same again. Amen. Amen. Say amen. <laughs> Those of you that made the confession today, these are some of the things we say when we go to church. Okay, when the pastor say praise the Lord, you can you can also say praise the Lord. You, that that's your response. Or when in, in some circles, when when even a Christian sister or brother says praise the Lord. We all respond, hallelujah. All right? And when they say hallelujah, we respond, amen. All right? So you will get to learn all of this. I mean, it's, it's amazing the love and the joy that comes through Christ Jesus. If you need help with your next steps, send me a message. I will be glad to partner with you in this journey. And I'll help you. I'll teach you baby steps. And then take you through the journey. If you are far away from me. Thank God for social media. You can always give me a call. Alright. Also you can find a church. In your community. And tell them. You have just accepted Christ. As your Lord and personal Savior. And they will help you from there. All right. God bless you. Thank you all so much for your time today.